All right, good evening. It's uh, 6.09. I'm going to go ahead and start with, off with the reconvene to open session. F, announcement of actions taken in closed session. None to report at this time. G, comments from the public. Moving on to H, presentations. H1, highest attendance for month two. Well, good evening, trustees. Good evening, community. Well, we're moving now on to the highest attendance for the month. And so attendance is something that we take very seriously and something that we do want to recognize and that we want to honor. So I do want to recognize, first of all, that our highest attendance for month one was Blanche Charles Elementary School. So if we can have Blanche Charles come up. And as Ms. Siri Hurtado comes up, principal of a Blanche Charles Elementary School, this is where we kind of pass on the trophy, right? And so it um, gives us a great pleasure uh, and an honor to uh, recognize our highest attendance school for month two is a dual elementary school with 97.58%. And Ms. Surtado will pass on the trophy to Ms. Hansen. And uh, they also get a certificate that they will be able to put play, uh, proudly uh, at their school site. And they also will get a banner. And this banner, if you've gone to different uh, school sites, you see these. And so this is to recognize uh, that they're doing an excellent job when it comes to uh, highest attendance. So. I know we have quite a few of our dual staff here as well. So uh, congratulations, congratulations to our students. And uh, congratulations, Ms. Hansen. And obviously our next month will be month three. So we have a lot of our schools that are gearing up and working hard to have the highest attendance and uh, basically take the trophy from Ms. Hansen and from the, the dual <laughs> staff. So uh, again, congratulations, dual school for a great uh, attendance rate. Thank you very much. Let's give him another big round of applause. Moving on to H2, student representatives from Aurora, Pablo Torres Borboa. Uh, thank you very much. Good evening, Superintendent Gonzalez, members of the board, staff, and members of the audience. At Aurora, we started off the school year with Red Ribbon Week and Spirit Week. Uh, Spirit Week was kicked off starting with the Twin Squad Day, uh, which students could dress alike with their friend's squad to match that day. Uh, Twin Squad Day was followed by Superhero Villain Day, when students could wear their favorite superhero or villain shirt. The following day was Halloween, and ASB held a dance and a costume contest for the students in which first, second, and third places could win a gift card from Jack in the Box. The day after was Dress as Your Favorite Teacher Day, and vice versa, in which the students could dress up as any teacher, and teachers could dress up as any student. To, the, to end the week, El Dia de los Muertos was celebrated with the making of an altar de muertos in front of our school. Future events for our school include a turkey trot on November 16th, in which the first place winner will take home a frozen turkey home. Thanksgiving break will start on November 16th through November 26th. And we would also like to thank all the veterans and Mr. Ca uh, Ciro Calderon and others here. Thank you. Moving on. Moving on to Calexico High School, Ariana Madrigal. Not here. From uh, ninth grade, Adrián Campos. Good afternoon. My name is Adrián Campos, and um, we weren't here. We were here not too long ago, so it's kind of short. So recently on October 31st, we had our costume contest where 
we had first, second, and third place um, winners. Then the day after, on November 1st, we had our first fall sports pep rally. And then since Monday this week, we've been rewarding chips to the students who have used their restroom passes three or less times. And then recently, to boost up our attendance, um, we are going to start um, giving out attendance incent incentives. And you buy these gifts by getting bulldog books and every two weeks of perfect attendance with no tardies you get five bulldog books our largest prize is either a bulldog backpack or a bulldog sports duffel bag for 30 bulldog books um thank you that's all i have for tonight good from enrique camarena in flores Good evening, board members. My name is Ian Flores. During November, we have we have been working on events. So far, we have held the soccer tournament where our seventh grade boys play second. On November 13th, ASBMPE will hold the turkey run. The school will have a canned food drive to support the neighborhood house. Today, we held our ASB elections. The past two weeks, we had our parent conferences led by students. Thank you. Thank you. From William Moreno. Mia Burgos. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mia Burgos, and I am a part of the ASB and William Moreno Junior High. Today, I will share the events we had for the month of October and the events we have planned for the month of November. From October 23rd through the 25th, we had our haunted locker room. It was a very successful event. We did not expect that many people to come, and we were surprised at the amount of money we made the four days. People even went in twice. We also had our dance on October 26th. It was one of our most successful dances that we have organized, and the Aztec cheerleaders helped us, helped us sell. We held our first ever Cupcake Wars on, on Wednesday, October 31st. We did not expect as many people to participate, but we had over 15 people competing in pairs and individually. They even asked us if we were going to hold another event like this one, and we are thinking about doing a Christmas-themed Cupcake Wars next month. These are the events we have planned for the month of November. From November 1st to the 15th, we are having a canned food drive. Students will have to drop off their canned goods with Ms. Zian in A4. If students, are if students are willing to donate, they will get a free dress pass, and the class who donates the most will get house points. On Friday, November 16th, we will have our annual turkey run. Students will have to run a mile in order to win a turkey. Winners will consist of the fastest 7th and 8th grade boy and girl. Those are the events we had for the month of October and the ones we have planned for the month of November. Thank you. Testing. All right. We're going to go ahead and move on. Now we're going to move on to our students of the month recognition. So we're very proud of the efforts of our students and working so hard. And so it uh, gives us great pleasure to present to you our students of the month. And we'll start with Aurora. Thank you very much. Um, first off, we, I would like to um, announce Destiny Reese. She got student of the month. And Everybody if we can hand. have Destiny Ruiz <laughs> along with her parents, please come up. And if mom and dad or parents can please come up as well. Destiny Ruiz is a Thank senior you. at Aurora High School of 17 years of age. Destiny enjoys the extracurricular program assets after school hours and also reading. She plans to attend IVC in the near future and study criminal psychology. Destiny would like to thank her family, friends, and teachers for always supporting her, her to obtain such achievement. Uh, next up, we have Jorge Martinez Serna. And if we can have your family, please come up as well. Thank you. Jorge Martinez Serna is a senior at Aurora High School. Jorge enjoys playing baseball and running off-road cars in his free time. Jorge plans to study general mechanic and obtain a master's degree in diesel. One of his dreams in life is to run, race, run a race in the Baja 1000. He would like to thank Mrs. Moncada for always supporting and helping him through his struggles.
Thank you. And we're going to go ahead and move on to Enrique Camarena Junior High School. Mr. Flores. Enrique Camarena's first district student of the month is Alondra Gil, who is an eighth grader. Alondra is the daughter of Dania Ramos and Rosendo. Is Alondra here? Gil. <laughs> and can we have Alondra with her parents please come up? Thank you. Alondra's hobbies are reading, reading. <laughs> are reading, playing instruments, and music, and also riding her skateboard. Her favorite subject is language arts. When Alondra graduates, she would like to go to a university and have a career in life. She would like to thank her sister because she is always, her, always by her side whenever she needs her. Enrique Camarena's second district student of the month is Alejandro Echeverria. <laughs> Alejandro is an eighth grader. He is the son of Ana and Esteban Echeverria. He likes to play cards and video games. Alejandro also likes to read and listen to music. His favorite subject is band. When he graduates, he would like to take, take a break but he, he is thinking of going to Cal Poly Engineering or any college that give him a scholarship. He would like to thank his parents and teachers. Alejandro would especially thank his mom for always pushing him, and he likes it when his parents congratulate him for doing something very good. Thank you. And we're going to go ahead and move on to Willie Moreno Junior High School, Ms. Burgos. William Moreno, 7th grade district, student of the month is ASB student Olivia Renee Carrillo. <laughs> Olivia is the daughter of Rosalie and Alvaro Carrillo, and she has one sibling, her older brother and CHS student Joaquin. Olivia's favorite subject has always been science because she finds it interesting. Some of her, some of her other favorite things are pineapple, the color light yellow, and the rock group Panic at the Disco. Her dream destinations are Hawaii and the state of Washington. Olivia's, Olivia is grateful to her father because she thinks he's funny and smart, and she considers, <laughs> considers him her role model. Her short-term goal is to maintain her 4.0 grade point average, and her long-term goal is to attend the University of San Diego. One day, Olivia wishes to live in a place that isn't a desert. She wants, to <laughs> she wants to be a marine biologist and have a job that she enjoys. We hope your dreams come true, Olivia. William Moreno's district student of the month is eighth grade honors student Luis Marentes. Luis uh, Marentes, are you here? Okay, go ahead. Luis is the son of Esmeralda Ruiz and Omar Villaseñor. He has three siblings, older brother, older brother Carlos and Jose Roberto and younger sister Emerald. Luis's favorite class is language arts because he enjoys writing. He also loves Hungry Howie's pepperoni pizza, any shade of purple, <laughs> hip hop and rap music, and Tesla's for their cool butterfly doors. Luis is inspired by NFL punter Market King. In fact, he inspires to one day be in the NFL himself and play for none other than the Raiders. In the meantime, he wishes to graduate high school and attend IVC, using it as a stepping stone to his future career. That's smart, Luis. We wish you the best of luck on your journey. Thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on with uh, CHS9, Adrian Campos. Okay, so our first student of the month would be currently Araiza. Not here? Okay. So currently Araiza is 14 years old. She has a 4.0 GPA and plays softball. Her g career goal is to be a marine biologist and or study medicine. She is also considering being a pediatrician. She plans to attend UCLA or UCSD, and she is proud of her academic achievements and is committed to maintaining a good GPA and making the honor roll. And 
and we have Everardo Cor Coronado. Okay. Ever Everardo Coronado is 14 years old and has a 4.0 GPA. His career goal is to become an architect and also to be a soccer player. He plans to attend UCSD. He is mo the most proud of his grades and overall of where he is in life right now. He is proud of his family because they are an important part of his life. Thank you. And we're going to move on to Calexico High School, uh, Ms. Ariana Madrigal. Good afternoon. Our first student of the district month is going to be Nitza Diaz. <laughs> she is the daughter of Berta Diaz and Octavio Diaz. Social science is her favorite subject. She is a member of the CHS band. She plays the bells in the band. She is also part of the varsity bulldog cheerleading squad. She is part of CSF Math Club and plans on joining the varsity swim team. She also volunteers as the treasurer of, for the ECRMC Junior Board Foundation. Anitza plans to attend a four-year university to become a registered nurse and continue studies to become a nurse <laughs> practitioner. Our next district student of the month is Tristan Torres. <laughs> he is the son of Violeta Torres. His favorite subject is math. He is, the mem he is a member of math club, circle of friends, and the robotics club. Tristan plans to attend a four-year university and hopes to ex be accepted to UCLA to study chemical engineering. Four staff presentations, dual elementary. If we can have Ms. Henson please come up. Good evening. We are recognizing two of our employees, and the first is going to be our teacher, Lupita Castro. Lupita Castro is one who's always willing to go beyond for what's best for students and for the school. She has a positive attitude, is always willing to share her ideas, and always learns. She seeks to do more and is patient throughout any waves. She works with parents, is kind to students, and is an example of a leader, a model for all of us. Regardless of any challenge she faces, she has a positive outlook and inspires us. This has been a long time coming, so congratulations. She also always makes the posters, so that, <laughs> so this time, I mean, it was really hard. We had to make a poster for her. Our next employee is Victor Lara. As you can tell, Victor Lara is one who's very humble. He doesn't notice the impact that he makes. When he knew he was going to be recognized, he told me, all, just with all the compliments you all give me, that's enough. He has more than you will ever see in an employee with the exemplary work ethic that he has. It is noticed and staff will specifically mention him throughout the day, oh, Mr. Lada, oh, he did this, we need to recognize him, we need to do something for him. 
So the dual elementary is not just visibly great, but it's also great because you're a part of it. So thank you so much for being part of what makes dual special. We were looking for a nice plant for him, but Christmas took over. <laughs> but that's what we were going to get for him. <laughs> all right, so congratulations to all of our students for your incredible academic success and achievement. We're incredibly proud of all of your achievements and our staff. Thank you very much for all that you do. Um, uh, we're just very grateful. And so uh, with that, we are going to go into a little bit of a celebratory mood uh, and take about five minutes and there's cake and uh, coffee outside for you to enjoy. Thank you. And it, uh, Juan Campos, who is the educational uh, coordinator at IVROP. And then I'll let Angela introduce herself. Hello, good evening. My name is Angela Rosas, and I'm the career specialist here at Calexico. Um, do I get started? Sure. OK, so there we are up there. <laughs> And um, there's a blank space because we hope to, uh, that a new career specialist will be starting with us very soon. So she's just going through the background process, but. Okay, so I know that that's not very visible, but here's some of the highlights. On September 25th, we held the IVROP COLT, which stands for Chapter Officer Leadership, Leadership Training. And we were fortunate to have two teams from Calexico attend and participate. Um, from the feedback that I received from both teachers and students, um, they really enjoyed it and they had a really good, great time and they learned a lot from this um, event. We also, um, the career specialists, we had a booth at the Calexico back to school night and we were able to interact with both students and parents. We were able to provide them pamphlets and um, other items of information from our program. Um, and just um, about our services. <laughs> On October 10th, we provided a regional CT advisory c committee me meeting and a few um, of Calexico staff attended, including Ms. Williams. On the 15th of October, we, we were able to provide physical training uniforms for all la Law Academy students and they were very excited to receive those. That way they can just kind of feel more of a sense of unity since they'll all be wearing the same thing. On October 24th, we held the Growing Healthy CTE Programs CTEIG presentation that was very informative and um, some of the Calexico people attended as well. Um, presentations in classrooms with five teachers. I was able to, um, to talk with teachers who allowed me to step into their classroom and just introduce myself and um, our services to the students. And I, I really hope that um, me doing so kind of brings more students um, to me and just so that I can further help them create resumes and job search. Um, career assessment, I was able to go into ninth grade agricultural classes and conduct my next move. This is a career assessment slash interest assessment so the students were able to um, they they complete a profiler which in turn gives them um, various lists depending on levels of education so they were able to, through they were able to um, look through that and kind of see what it what levels of education it would take to get to achieve their their desired careers on October 26th we held the regional welding competition at IVC. It was a Halloween weld off. All schools were, um, they were invited to participate and then it was a great success. So these are student services. These are numbers from the time study for the months of September and October only. Um, so CTSO skills support. Uh, with the cult, we were able to um, help 12 students. They participated and attended, and I think it was, like I said, a great success. Um, I was able to help 21 students with direct student services. I believe that um, my 
introducing myself to classes really helped bring in some students. They were able to know that I was there at certain days and times and so that I was available to them to give that service. We worked a lot on resumes, interview skills, and on job search. I was able to work with 102 students in the career exploration interest assessment, which was the my next move. Um, I believe students really, I got real, really good feedback from them. I think they, they really gained a lot of information and knowledge from this, from CTE awareness. Um, I also went into ninth grade agricultural classes and uh, we were able to do an uh, activity in which, in which they explore dif different uh, agricultural careers and they kind of um, looked into themselves and how FFA can help them achieve those goals. We helped 12 students in back to school night and 521 students were helped out through the, well they, they were present at the time of the introductions uh, <coughs> of myself and our services. Thank you. Um, before I move to the next slide, I'll just give a brief explanation of the numbers and how that um, kind of helps us hold ourselves accountable. Um, when we talk about something like Colt, we had um, seven different high schools there, um, many different CTSOs represented from all of the different high schools. Um, the way that she's accounting for those numbers are only the students that were present from Calexico High School, if that helps with some of that. Um, and then when we talk about a number uh, such as 521 students and we try and wrap our heads around something like that, um, it is exactly what it says. It's just a brief introduction. Um, and when you think about five teachers and all of their classes, that's how it is that you get up to a number like that. So I hope that uh, kind of helps to clarify. Um, the next one, sorry that it's a little bit difficult to see, but um, I'll just go ahead and highlight some of the services that are offered. Um, these are offered to all of the CTE teachers in, in various different ways. Um, but one of the things, uh, and I'll just go down the list, is mentoring programs, skills demonstrations such as the weld, the weld off. Um, classroom presentations, such as what Angela's been working on. Um, competency certificates, this is something that usually we follow up with the teachers at the end of the year, um, once they've hit certain competencies. And then A through G submission support uh, was something that we had a huge success last year with, with Calexico, and we'll continue to follow up with teachers um, that would like to, to follow up with that this year. Um, what we do is after the services are offered, we then vo uh, follow up with the teachers. Um, that takes constant communication um, between us and the teachers, and that helps, um, it, it kind of flows down the pipeline. Uh, that could either come from me, from Juan, from um, Angela, and then as always, we always try and follow up with the teacher in person, so we try and visit them in the classroom as well. Um, what are some of the values that, that come out of the services that are offered um, specifically to students? Some of those things include um, professional networking opportunities that go beyond what is provided already in the classroom. Um, how do you get that? By those mentoring programs, um, such as the, the health mentoring program with SDSU. That's not something that necessarily happens within the classroom already, and we try and provide an extra value-added service with that. Um, something, you know, also value to the students would be student and school recognition um, valley-wide. So a positive social interaction between valley schools and CTE programs. I'll just share with you that something that was really, really cool that came out of um, Colt was that the FFA students, and we see this, you know, in different FFA activities, but when they have the opportunity to interact with different not just FFA students, but different CTSOs, so different uh, health clubs, HOSA, um, maybe the different law students from all over the valley. It provides an opportunity or, or a platform for students to build on those leadership skills and get different ideas from other schools and campuses. Um, and then, of course, as always, it's something that we add to their resume. We help them out in understanding what it is that they're already doing that they can add, add to what it is that they think they may not be doing, but they are. Um, upcoming, just a few things that we're kind of get, gearing up for, um, getting excited for. 
Uh, on December 4th, we're going to meet with the law enforcement instructors, and we're going to have that here in Calexico High School, or at Calexico High School. So uh, we've been fortunate enough that Mr. Davies is going to host the other instructors from the other campuses. Um, January 30th is our planned date for the Youth Ag Summit. It'll be very similar to the one last year. Um, in March is when we're looking at having the law competition. And again, that's going to come from the instructors um, through their discussions. And we'll find out December 4th what they decide. Um, and then 8th, April 9th is the date that we have set for the IVROP showcase. That's all we had. Thank you. Any questions, board members? No? All right, moving on to H6. LCAPs, CSD, local indicators, and LCAP update. Okay, good evening. We're going to start with the CUSD local indicators first. So what are our local indicators? Um, for the local control funding formula, priorities where, where data is not collected at the state level, an LEA will measure and report its progress through the dashboard based on locally collected data. So in the dashboard, we have two different kinds of data. Um, we have local indicators, and then we have the state indicators. The local indicators include all of these priorities. Priority one is your basic conditions at school. Two is the implementation of state academic standards. Three is the parent engagement. Six is the local climate. And this year we have a new indicator, which is access to a broad course of study. These are all the priorities. So what you have on the left, whoa, right here. These are the ones, the, the local indicators that are measured by the state. And so these come out in the dashboard. On the right side, we have the local indicators that we have to provide information and we have to upload it into the dashboard. And so what do we do with both indicators? We look at both the dashboard indicators that are provided by the state, and then we look at our local data through our local indicators, and the data that we collect with these two is the vehicle for developing our LCAP. And the end goal is, is um, to have improved student outcomes. So state and local um, indicators are shown in two different ways. The state indicators are shown through performance levels, which is what we have here, the, and you've seen before, it's the five by five colored grids. And so that, those are provided by the, by the state. On the right side, we have the local indicators, and they give us options of whether we want to do a summary or if we want to do a survey, a, a tool that they provide. And the way we rank ourselves is we are the ones who select if we met, not met, or not met for two or more years. At this point, just by providing the information, you qualify as met. There's still no rubric as, as to a ranking if, uh, that, that says whether you've met it or, or have not met it. These are the performance levels, and normally we have red being the lowest performance and moving up to the, the blue. And then this is what it looks like on the dashboard. So we have chronic absenteeism, the suspension rate, the English learner uh, progress, the graduation rates, our college and career indicator, our English language arts, and our mathematics. So this is what the state provides. But what we are required to do is we have to do the local indicators and we have to measure progress annually. And then we have to report this to our board in a, a public meeting, which is what is taking place right now. And then after I report it to you, then before November uh, uh, 16, no, 2018, I have to upload it into the dashboard. So. Um, I will be uploading this information tomorrow. So these are the performance levels that we have for the local indicators. So we're either going to check up that we met it, we did not meet it, or we haven't met it for two or more years. So again, the, this is the, the performance levels. And in the middle, you're going to see it says use self-reflection tools included in the evaluation rubric. So that's provided to us. And then we have to report the information into the dashboard. So this is what the, the dashboard looks 
in the complete page on the top you see the the uh, state indicators and then here on the bottom is where we have the in local indicators that i'm going to be sharing information with you today and on the right you see that last year we did all, we met all indicators the only one you don't see here is priority seven and that one will be coming up in our fall um, results so then the local indicators um, have standards so our first standard is just the basic conditions um, and we use a lot of our Williams information on this one so this is where we look at if our teachers are appropriately assigned we looked at uh, access to the curriculum and the alignment of the instructional materials and then we look at if we have safe clean and functional facilities this is what it looks like when I have to upload the information this is not the view that the public has this is what I go into and upload um, on the dashboard for the um, the uh, person in, in, um, updating the information so these are the three indicators uh, that we have for the first standard which is uh, priority number one basics so the first one asks the number of percentage of misassignments of teachers of ELs uh, total teacher misassignments and vacant teacher positions so this year the, um, we had one vacant position at Calexico High School we did not have any misassignments in, in for English learners or misassignments for total teachers the second one was how many of our students do not have access to instructional materials. So we have a zero because we were able to get mat uh, materials for all of our students. And then the third one is our FIT tools. When we do the um, visits with our Williams uh, team to see what are some of the deficiencies, we had 147 deficiencies district-wide and we had zero X's. The X's are the um, extreme deficiencies, so we didn't have any extreme deficiency. So here's the list of the sites. Um, in terms of vacancy, the vacancy that we had was at Calexico High School. We had one vacancy, and that was for a CHS SPED class. For our, we'll, our FIT tools, I left last year's scores here, so you would see the percentage that we had last year for all the sites, and these are the results for this year. For the majority of the sites, there, were, um, there was improvement, okay, there was growth. Here is, it indicates towards the bottom, so what is exemplary, what is good? So it provides the percentages on the left side, and then this is just a description of what a, a check mark is, a D is, and an X is. So if we go and look at the um, deficiencies. We have 147 this year. I, I put here for reference our deficiencies from last year. Last year we had 213. So we actually also improved because we have less deficiencies compared to last year. And here's, we broke down how many deficiencies we had um, in the different areas. And so the one that we had the highest deficiencies, and I cannot see, let me put my glasses, it's the interior surfaces. So this could be any broken tiles, um, torn uh, uh, carpets, uh, holes on the walls, or peeling paint. So we had 43 Ds in that area. The, the next highest was the playground equipment. And on here we had any broken cement area around the playground area, the holes that are coming out in the, um, in the um, pour and play. Uh, we noticed that several of our sites have holes in the pour and play, especially in the area where students land from the slides. Um, we also have here um, fall zones. So we use a lot of sand for fall zones and now they're recommending that instead of using sand or even the pour and play because pour and play is not friendly to this climate in the summer uh, they recommend we use the uh the uh, jerry was it wood chips right wood chips engineer, engineer wood chips okay um and then the third one was that was our highest was number 22 and that was roofs the majority of those d's had to do with either uh broken tiles these on the top or they were stained. They had little stains around. Um, so that's 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 our final numbers for the deficiencies in terms of the fit tool. Standard two. This is the implementation of the state academic standards. Now for this one, we have a choice whether we want to do a narrative or we want to use a reflection tool. So we opted to use a reflection tool. And when we take this. A survey because kind of like a survey 
we score ourselves whether we are exploring and researching, if we're beginning, we're doing the initial implementation, we have full implementation, or we have implementation and sustainability. And this is what it looks like when we go into the dashboard. This is what I have to fill up. What I did is we did a Google uh, form and I submitted it to every one of our principals and they had to work with their academic support teachers and their uh, department chairs or grade level teachers so that they would self-evaluate themselves. So the first one talks about progress in providing professional learning for teaching to the recently adopted academic standards and or curriculum favorite frameworks. So if you see on the left side, I kept the, in red were the scores from last year, and on the right side was the average of all the results district-wide. Um, so we took an average because we, did, we got them from elementary all the way through high school. And if you notice, the two, we, we had improvements here, the two that are still considered low are the NGSS standards and the history of social science. We haven't had an adoption for uh, science yet, so we're doing a lot of uh, supplemental lessons and creating things because our textbooks are outdated and this is statewide because we haven't had an adoption for years and then for history it's the same for history the adoption came out towards the end of the year last year so we started meeting with our adoption committee and what we've been doing is we've been working with the county to provide some training but our teachers are going to be piloting at the secondary some of the curriculum before we invest in in materials Number two talks about progress in making instructional materials that are aligned to the recently adopted standards. So again, kind of the same area. We purchased materials um, that is state adopted for ELA and mathematics, so we went up to fives, and we're still working with our ELD. Um, some sites are piloting one program, others have another program that they have, so we, they scored uh, an average of four. And again, for the NGSS and the history of social science, we're still waiting for these adoptions, and I know that that's gonna help us um, take our scores higher. For um, this area, number three, they asked us to rate ourselves in terms of implementation policies or programs to support staff in identifying areas where they can improve in delivery of instruction aligned to the recently adopted curriculum standards. And we could do this through collaborative time, like our PLC times. It could be through focused classroom walkthroughs, teacher pairing, lesson study. There's a different amount of activities that we can do. So if you see compared from last year to this year, there's been growth um, where the need is still in NGSS and uh, our social science curriculum. Number four is the progress in implementing each of the following academic standards adopted by the state uh, for our other courses. So this includes our CTE, health, physical, visual performing, and world language. So our scores basically state the same. And one thing that we notice is that we really need to start working with our staff on our health education <coughs> standards. This talks about uh, for the year 2016-17, and here I had a typo. It, it, this should be 17-18, so I apologize for that. It should be both years. We have to rate the local agency success at engaging in the following activities with teachers and school administrators. So one is identifying PD needs for groups or teachers or staff. Right now what we're doing is every time we do a district-wide professional development day, we provide a survey as to what are some of the activities that they, they want to have incorporated. So. Our scores for this one went from three to a four. Number two is identifying professional, uh, professional learning needs of individual teachers and providing support for teachers on standards they have not yet mastered. So teachers score themselves a three this year compared to last year. So we still need more work to do, but there has been an improvement when it comes to providing professional development based on teachers' needs. So overall, I can't read over there. So there's a paragraph that says, so overall, what are some of the, the things that we're going to do to continue supporting or improving? So the first one says that the, as a primary focus for staff development uh, under our district's instructional goals, our instructional goals are critical thinking, problem solving, the ability to apply knowledge of current disciplines, and growth mindset. So we're going to be investing in these um, initiatives that we have for our curriculum department. In addition, we're gonna to continue to implement the AVID strategies and then the technology uh, trainings that we've been doing. In terms of AVID, we are, we're still pending to train our TK and Kinder, and we have that program for February. After that, we will have everybody trained from 
TK to 12 with the exception of Aurora. For our continuation schools, we, we made a visit last year to a continuation in Hemet just to see what does it look like at the um, continuation or community schools. And so I did take uh, two staff members and the principal for Aurora to see if they were considering doing AVID and, and how can we can plan it out. So this year is going to be our planning out and see how we're going to embed it and hopefully um, get some of our teachers trained over the summer and incorporate AVID at Aurora. Um, number three is to continue to refine the process of data collection uh, via our district assessments and through us uh, that could be through CASP or any of our benchmark assessments. Uh, the next one is to provide annual training to support teachers on the newly adopted curriculum and new frameworks in the areas of math, ELA, history, and science. And I know we will be working with history and science in the next couple of years because those are the new adoptions. Um, we're going to continue to provide professional development and release time for teachers. If they, as a site, they want to go to particular trainings for, for math or ELA or history or any other content areas, so we're going to continue to support that. Um, really, uh, teachers are also re so teachers are also relieved to, to go to pre-approved workshops and conferences with the expectation of disseminating their findings by way of instructional networking. The district will continue to provide content-specific training to the different departments. Um, and then we're going to continue to support our teachers through coaching um, through our AST or academic support teachers. Um, we will continue to have our administrators do walkthroughs into the classrooms and observations and to see how we can support our teachers. And we're going to continue to establish common language and observation protocols for observations in order to support and future professional development topics. Priority three is parent engagement. Again, for this one, we have the option of a survey or a sum summary. So we opted for the survey. And the survey that we adopted is the California School Parent Survey, which is the one that's tied to the Healthy Kids, but this is the parent portion, so both are West Ed um, surveys. So this one is administered every two years. And that's what the, the LCAP indica indicator says, that we are okay to do it every, every two years because this is one of the approved surveys that they have for the dashboard. So on this one, we had shared this information last year, but we, we gave this survey in February of 2017. We had 662 responses. We will be doing this survey again um, in, on February of 2019, and we already have Ms. Ba Megan um, Blick, who is already organizing this, and will be meeting with our site administrators so that we can have a bigger sample. Um, it is a very long survey. So we're gonna try and push it through our parent uh, assemblies, through our parent meetings, through our my LCAP meetings, so that we have more people. Um, and sometimes they do need assistance with translating, or even if it's already in Spanish, they still want us to kind of translate the concept. So we'll be supporting our parents with that. So we had the California survey, but then we also do our annual CUSD parent survey. We, we do similar questions, not exactly the same, but last year we, or this school year, last year, last school year towards the end in March during our open house, um, we had 1,267 responses. The majority were from the elementary sites. And so this is what the data shows us. For the California School Parent Survey, um, they only measure strongly agreed. They don't include the agree. So if, if you see here, it talks about school allowing input and welcoming parent contributions, uh, engaging them as active partners. Uh, in seeking input from them and parents fe feeling um, welcome to participate. What we notice with the data is that at the elementary, it tends to be higher. By the time that we get to the high school, we see less of a participation or a perception of the parents that they're not invited to participate. In terms of academic orientation and participation, promoting academic success for students, uh, safe place for my child, motivating students to learn, adults caring about students and providing opportunities for meaningful student participation. If you notice again, we start in the 50th percent for the elementaries and as we start moving down to the middle schools and to the high school, some of the scores start going down. Um, our lower scores are at the high school level. We looked at other information that was embedded in this uh, survey, but we looked at the combination of strongly agree and agree, and 92% of our students back in, in 2017 agreed that the school allows input and welcomes parents' contributions. 90% were agreed or strongly agreed that the school encourages to be active partners. So the percentages seem higher once you add the agree. It's, they look low when we only account for the strongly agree. 
This is our CUSD parent survey. And again, we looked at the strongly agree and agree. And um, involvement in their child's education is valued. They, we had 92% response. Um, they're invited to meetings about how they can learn, 92.5%. So the percentage are, are very similar to the, um, the, uh, the West Ed survey when we combine the strongly agreed and agreed. I think the one that was probably the lowest was, was, uh -oh, was the 80% right here. Uh, parents strongly agree or agree that they are invited to help plan family involvement activities. So that's where we had the, the lowest percentage. Um, in our parent survey, we actually asked, when would you prefer your, your parent trainings? We tend to do them in the evening, but we did have a, a high percentage, well, 24% saying that they would prefer it in the morning. So one of the things that we're doing this year is we are offering trainings in the morning and we're offering trainings in the afternoon. And so we're gonna try and see if we can do some of those for our LCAP where we have something in the morning and then something in the afternoon for those who can't join us in the, in the evening. Uh, part of the survey also asked, well, so what kinds of parenting topics are you interested in? Um, our highest percentage was helping my child with homework and we have high school graduation requirements and so forth. So I also shared this information with some of our um, administrators who conduct parent training, such as Ms. Armendariz, um, who does a lot of our work with our counselors um, for some of the parent trainings. And then I also shared it with Ms. Brisa Huerta Price. She does the, uh, the parent project. So that they're aware of some of the topics and they did tell me that they had already incorporated some of these topics. The next one is school climate. Um, every other year, we also have to provide uh, measures of perceptions of school safety and connectedness, and this is for our students through the Healthy Kids Survey. And so we had, in 2017, we had 2,498 responses from our students, um, 463 was for our fifth graders, and then 2,035 were for our seventh, ninth, and eleventh graders. These are the great, great spans that the survey is administered to, and this is what the, um, the uh, local indicators say that we have to use great spans. So for our student healthy kids, we looked at similar to the parents, but this is how do they see themselves or perceive the school connectedness. And if you notice, it's the same pattern. We start high at the elementaries and as we progress towards the high school, uh, we see lower numbers. The, the NTO over here is in your non-traditional school, so th this will be Aurora's results on the very far right. Academic motivation at the elementary, we had 42%, and then we go down to the high school, down to 33. Uh, so how many students were truant more than a few times? And you see here the percentage of our students. As they get higher into the high school, we have tend to have more truant students. Caring adults and relationships. So as students move down to the high school, they, they have a perception that the staff at the high school level, there are less caring relationships established at that level. High expectations at the elementary, they scored themselves as having higher expectations or the perception of high expectations are in comparison to the junior highs and then um, the, the high school. And then meaningful participation, again, we started with 30%. Uh, I don't know if students really understand what meaningful participation means. So the percentages tend to be smaller and we have like 10% at the grade 11 and 5% at the Aurora or non-traditional. School safety, um, we talked about how, feel they, how, they feel, how safe they feel at school. We, I separated the elementary and the secondary because the questions were different. So 81% of our fifth graders felt safe at school. 44% um, uh, stated that they had been hit or pushed at some time. Mean rumors being spread about them, 44%, and being called bad names or mean jokes about them, 41%. And then 50% of our students claimed that they saw a weapon at a school. This is the secondary. Um, school perceived as safe. In grade seven, we started 70%, and as we go down, I mean, up in grades, our percentages go down where students feel a little less safer at the high school or at the non-traditional school. Experience bullying or harassment, 24%. So this one kind of stayed around the 20th uh, percentile each in each uh, grade level. Had uh, rumors spread, 35%, 37, so about the same. Um, that they're afraid of being beaten up. We had 60%, so this one is actually the opposite. Our seventh graders are more afraid of being beaten up than they are at the high school level. Seen a weapon on campus, 
This percentage is actually smaller than, with the exception of the Aurora, compared to the elementary. And then being drunk or high on drugs or on school ever, in seventh grade we had 1% versus the high schools 11 and 17%. So our governing board and our district safety committee has made student safety a priority. And, and our board has been very supportive and we've included a lot of these uh, initiatives in our LCAP. Uh, the district has also taken numerous measures to create a safe learning environment, including stationing our, our, our SRO at Calexico High School, employing campus security at the secondary sites and noon duties at the elementary sites. So things that we've done, uh, we're gonna continue doing. So we've rerouted our visitors so that they have to go to our main office. We still have a, a two campuses that we have to work with in, in terms of the rerouting. One of them is ninth grade campus. The other one is uh, the entrance to Enrique Camarena so that they go directly into the office. Um, and we do continue to have our visitor management system, which is Raptor, that they have to scan in to go in. The last year, um, in the middle of the year, we started implementing Catapult. So we will continue to, to use Catapult and continue to train our staff. Um, and through our district committee, we have uh, our law enforcement who's participating in our committee, and so is our fire chief. And they're really willing to participate in Catapult. And they're right now we're in the process of signing them up so that they also have access to Catapult. They will become part of our safety. So whatever we see, they will see. Our sites are still continuing and implementing PBIS programs such as character counts, conscious discipline, habits of highly effective students. And uh, our counselors are doing a lot of activities um, in terms of addressing social and emotional needs for our students. We're also part partnering this year with our County Office of Ed on developing a multi-tier system of supports. And what this framework does is we work around the entire child, a whole child. So we look at this child through the lens of the academics, the behavior, and the social emotional needs. This is a framework that will be required of every state, uh, I mean of every district here in California. So we're taking the initiative and working with our county on it. And then the last one is we're going to continue to create, connect our connectedness to our school through, through our growth mindset, through our tech academies and school activities, and training our teachers on different ways of presenting lessons that are more engaging, more hands-on, um, but at the same time promote a lot of critical thinking. And this is a new one, the Broadcart, Broad Course of Study. So this one we're still trying to figure it out. But what this one says is that at the elementary level, grades one through six, Students have to have access to this, these, these, stand, these content areas, English, math, social science, science, visual and performing arts, health, physical education, and other studies that may be prescribed by the governing board. At the secondary, we have the English, social science, foreign language, physical education, science, math, visual performing arts, applied arts, and career tech education. So in this tool, we have to answer four different um, items. One is to identify what measures we're using Second is to summarize the results. Three is to identify barriers. And four is to um, inform the develop, in, informing this into the development of our LCAP. So the first question asked is, how are you tracking students? How are students getting access to course, um, broad course of study? And does that include our different students, including our unduplicated student groups? So for this one, I, I presented this information to our high schools, to our elementaries, and to our junior highs. And so this is, these are some of the responses that they provided. So at the high school level, they use Synergy and Naviance to track student access to broad courses of study. Through Naviance, they do the four-year plans for every student, and, and including all of our subgroups. And this is a, as a way of monitoring access to a broad course of study. Um, our students with exceptional needs are also provided with additional support through their case managers, reviewing, reviewing course offerings. A lot of our students and our SPEP, uh, a lot of our SPEP population students have access to also our CTE um, courses. And then in the past three years, CHS has added more CTE and more AP and elective sections based on some of the, our student interests. Just this year, we added the AP, Cal AP ke uh, Chemistry and the uh, AP Art. Um, CHS has also increased um, sessions over the past three years. We've increased more sections of AP History, AP Psychology. Um, and then we're also opening more AVID sections. And we added Computer Science and Journalism as elective. CHS has improved the existing CT, co CT courses and has added the Junior Navy cadets to both the 9th and the 12th grade over the last three years. And we also reopened our auto shop. Um, and Aurora added their science courses this school year. 
Um, in addition, we're in the process of creating the CT facilitator position so that we can assist CTE teachers in administering, monitoring, and implementing the requirements for CTE. At the junior high level, Synergy is used to track students' access to Black Course of Study. As part of the process, the teachers are also given a choice of what are some of the courses that they are able to offer or are interested in offering. So for example, we have math classes and support classes. So one of the things that both junior highs are doing is they're converting some of the support classes to STEM. Teachers with math credentials can te teach STEM. Teachers with science credentials cannot teach STEM. So we asked the teachers, are you interested in doing other activities? Are you interested in doing journalism, STEM? And so based on teachers' uh, credentials and if they're interested, then we start opening some of those sections and then we start looking if there's interest on behalf of the students. The administration team and the counselors review the course offerings and enrollment and decisions are based are made based on student needs and then course offerings and making sure that we have enough enrollment in each course. Aside from the current content ex uh, courses, our junior high also offer um, AVID and Excel elective courses, honors, uh, STEM, STEAM, MESA, Advanced 7th Math, Algebra 1, ASB, Banding Computer. So they do offer um, a broad course of study. The one thing that we did notice is, for example, that Enrique Camarena, they offer Spanish, for example, um, and journalism electives that are not being offered at Willie Moreno. Um, for students with exceptional needs, the case managers review and basing, uh, based on assessments, they also provide um, the best schedule for these students and they also uh, ensure that they have or course offerings such as being part of AVID, STEM, ASB, BAN, and so forth. At the elementary level, um, they use Synergy uh, to track students and then they, the master schedule is, is based on, on class rosters. And then what the teachers do is they also look at filters and what are some of the students' needs. But all of our students take ELA, math, science, um, the social science, PE, ELD, and RTI. There's really not a lot of room for electives, so what we're trying to do is through RTI is where we're embedding some of these enrichment activities, such as doing robotics during those, those times. And we're also um, adding AVID methodologies um, district-wide to all elementaries. And there's other programs that you can see here that we, that we offer in terms of uh, supplemental programs. The third one asked, um, asked us to summarize ex to the extent to which students have access and, and, and we can describe progress over time. And so for that one, um, it just kind of re reinstates the same thing we said earlier. What are some of those courses that the students are enrolling in? Um, and then do all of our students have access to these courses? One of the things that the high school was mentioning is that in the past we used to require, for example, filters or teacher recommendations to be able to enter into an AP class. Well, that has taken off. So anybody can apply to an AP class. There are no prerequisites. Um, and so we're also continuing to do some work with our science departments in terms of offering, for example, biology to all of our students and not having to have a prerequisite for math because it's really not needed at biology level. So those are conversations that we're still holding and that we're gonna continue to work with, our, with all of our schools. One of the things that we also need to work on is on our vis visual performing arts at the elementary level. Um, and our health. How, how are we going to address the health standards and through what content, content area? What are some of our barriers? So these are some of the barriers that was, was shared by our teams. One of them is time. So for example, we feel that the elementary, they're very constrained with time because there's so many contents that we have to teach. Um, clear com communication with students. We need to allow our students to know that we do have these AP courses, that you don't need requirements, that we can enter a CTE pathway, that a CTE pathway requires two years and so forth. Just informing our, our students. Um, they talked about making sure that we have access to Google accounts for our, for our students at the classroom level so that they have access to Navians at all times. Um, and we, of course we need more one-to-one -one devices. Um, aligning our teacher credentials with the master schedule needs. Uh, the other barrier is parent participation. Uh, the high school is saying that as the students get higher and higher and get to the high school level, they see less of parent participation. And they hold a lot of meetings, but they don't get a lot of turnout, just so that parents know what are the different courses that are being offered at the high school. Um, another barrier is limited number of elective offerings due to the number of students in need of support classes. The existing instructional schedule is already impacted. Um, and then co coordination of their RTI schedules and instructional demands. And then the need for, for addressing or training standards for the health, the PE, and the VAPA. 
And then the last one is in response to the results of the tool, what are some of the revisions, decisions, or changes that we're gonna make? So we're gonna continue to work with Navians uh, th so that we know that our students are developing their four-year plans. This year we're doing Navians at the seventh and eighth grade so that we start earlier with them. Um, we're gonna continue having our CTE and electives fairs and promoting CTE at the junior highs and at the elementary level so that students are aware. And you might have seen that we've already had field trips for elementary is going into the secondary. Um, we're gonna work on developing a survey. Not all our schools give surveys as to what are some of their student interests, so we're gonna work on that so that we offer it to all of our sites. And we have to think a little bit how we're gonna do it for our elementary. Um, continue communicating with our parents. Um, our AP courses, opening it to all, no more teacher requirements. Um, having more articulation to ensure that the same offerings are offered, for example, at both of our junior highs. Support, supporting the mathematic courses and the different electives, such as converting our support ca um, classes to STEM, and then continue to research on what supplemental programs are more effective, and then support our, 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 our staff with the curriculum and training on health, PE, and VAPA. And how this helps us inform the LCAP, it actually predicts and needs and tells us what are some of the needs that we need to focus on. We create optimal conditions for learning, we equip students to fully participate. We provide language acquisition for our English learners. Um, we ompl implement ongoing monitoring and support reclassified English learners, and we're gonna increase the enrollment in our CTE uh, pathways, since those are part of our, our, our um, one of our state required, our state um, dashboard indicators. And th that is it. Any questions? Two quick questions. Yes. One, so you're gonna be uploading this to the dashboard tomorrow? Yes, I have until next Friday, but I'm gonna try and do it tomorrow. You're doing the indicators. Any, I mean, you give us, there's a lot happening here in the district. I think that's great. Uh, it's a very fast presentation. I know, it's very long, it's a lot of pages. But there's a lot of content here that it's right. important for us to know. Um, any concerns opening the dashboard or through the LCAP at this time? No concerns. Um, I know that we will be, I'm working with uh, Mr. Vega and bring him up to date what our LCAP is. There are some actions that are not in our LCAP that we might have to revise in December, January after he's done his uh, interim report. Mm -hmm. And so we're continue working. If we do any changes to the LCAP, we will have to bring it to the board for approval. And then just the one piece that stands out, I know you covered one of the indicators about parent involvement. Yes. I think there's a lot we can do and a lot of, thing, a lot of things happening. Um, and I think something that we can support more. The parent survey, I'll just ask if you can just share the district parent survey with us at a later, you know, later time. Okay, I can, the template. yes, I can send you the actual report. It's a long report. Right. We have a report, we have reports for our parents, for our students, and for our staff too. Perfect. So we're gonna continue and, and give that report mm -hmm. to all of our, our, our stakeholders. Okay, thank you. Are those reports in English and Spanish? Uh, no, they're in English. And they're, I think they're, they're what we don't create those, those are created by the by West Ed. I'll have to go back and check, but they're, they're public information, they're posted in their website. So I, I can check. I can check if they have it posted in Spanish too. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Yep, I have one just suggestion. Uh, during the campaign, we found, at least I found out that we lack uh, electives in the high school. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe that should be part of our LCAP. I mean, we're sending our kids to PE instead of mm -hmm. giving them an elective, and mm -hmm. I think it's critical that we okay. we start giving them electives. Yeah, we'll be working with the high school to see what we can offer. I know one of the things that we wanted to offer is more CTE courses, but in order for us to offer CTE, then we, we, we have to look at our FTEs, yeah. um, because if not, our cl low classes will be Well, low. I mean, business classes, I mean, we can be creative yeah. and start giving them classes. Mm -hmm. Another issue was that, um, some of our kids are can't fill out an application, properly fill out an application, uh -huh. and that's very critical. Mm -hmm. And also, um, uh, report writing is mm -hmm. another one that okay. came up. So. All right. All right. So the next one is also mine. It's that's the LCAP update, and I do this three times a year for you. So that's the other the one that's the other page that is with you. So one of the things that we worked on was on changing our district focus and initiatives. So that is page two. So if you look at your page two, now we have our, our goals are now, we're gonna provide students with critical thinking and problem solving skills, tools to apply knowledge across disciplines and opportunities to become more growth minded. These were some of the uh, input that was provided by our, our staff district wide that we began the work last year. 
So we're still developing this, but this is something that we're going to continue to work with. Number two is we're implementing a multi-tier system of support to address students' academic behavior and social emotional needs. Before you used to see it as providing designated support. Designated support is no longer what we, we, we will be using. We're gonna be using multi-tier systems. And three is the same. We're gonna improve the quality and safety of the school environment to support optimal learning. On the next page, page three, our goals have not changed. We continue to have our six goals. Goal one is on instruction, curriculum, and assessments. Two is technology. Three is college and career readiness. Four is pupil engagement and school climate. Five is parent involvement. And six is facilities and safety. I'm not going to go into details into all of the, the actions that we have accomplished, but I do want you to look at the ones that are highlighted in yellow. Some of these are in yellow because we haven't incurred uh, funds yet. Others are in yellow because we are doing activities, but they, they haven't come for a cost. So it's actually, we, we actually are doing it, but we have a lot of uh, trainings that are free of charge, for example. So number four, fund the science curriculum committee to plan and integrate subjects. It's highlighted in yellow because our first meeting is scheduled for December. Okay, so last year we did a lot of work with the high school level. Um, and so now we're gonna bring, um, start sharing some of those uh, information with the rest of our junior high and elementary uh, representatives, our leads. And then if we go down to the page five, the recruiting hire qualified, uh, certificated, um, and classified applicants, no funds have been incurred yet. Uh, but again, this is something that we still have available. Um, we talked about uh, you know, providing trainings uh, through our bits uh, for our internships. So we'll continue to look into this, um, this uh, action. On page six, Fund a, and maintain a library management system to allow our undeplicated pupils access to a collection of library resources. Currently, we have a program that is outdated, and it was originally a co-purchase or co-partner with the, uh, our Camarena Library. Um, it's called Millennium. So we're actually researching right now. We have uh, Carmina Ramirez, who is our district librarian. She's re researching different possible systems. And then we're gonna have to start holding meetings with our library to see what's going to be the impact to them. Nine is create a multimedia center for Calexico High School. That's one of uh, the new actions. And so what we're doing right now, we're at a planning stage. And what we're doing is we're gonna be conducting surveys uh, for the design of the multimedia lab. What, are, what is it that our students want in a multimedia lab? And then from there, start holding meetings with our stakeholders to see what are some of the things that they would like to see. Um, it, it's not a, enough funds that we have for the first year, but we have something to start with this year, uh, even include uh, buying materials, um, you know, uh, furniture, for example, that is more uh, inducive to learning to this type of a, of a facility. On page seven, you see um, our A through G. It's highlighted in yellow because we haven't spent the fund yet, but we're in the process of already uh, processing our Navians or re renewing our licenses because we renew we renewed it somewhere in the middle of the year, so that'll take place right now. Um, activities such as our A through G and FAFSA, it's already being offered at Calexico High School, but there's no expenses incurred, so that's why we, we, we have it in yellow. Five, PSA testing. Most of the testing takes place at the end of the year, but right now we have, we're having our junior highs take the PSAT, all of our junior highs, and so we're, we will be paying that out of this um, action. Number nine is the CTE summer program. So even though we have the summer program until you know, in June, July, we are already starting to have meetings with our CTE teachers as to what are some of those prerequisite electives that we can offer during the summer to support our CTE once students get to the high school level. The next yellows are on page 10. So page 10 is part of goal four. So for this one, number 11 talks about providing incentives to improve our students' participation in, um, for migrant. So migrants started their tutoring sessions about, I'm gonna say a month ago, and so they will be having a field, tri field trip incentive in December, so they haven't incurred the funds yet. Um, the number 12, the technology uh, academy for the summer, well that one's still pending until we have the summer, but we're already beginning the conversations of what that can look like. 
15 is our support activities for our foster and homeless youth. So we haven't incurred funds yet. A lot of those funds are used for activities such as prom and so forth. But right now we are doing a lot of activities for them that have not gone, um, have not had a cost. A lot of them are donations that we've had or that are being funded out of the Title I. 17 um, activities for our libraries. So our, our district librarian has been doing a lot of activities at no cost with materials that she has because she's doing sessions, for example, on rocks or dinosaurs. And her history is as a, as a science teacher, so she's using a lot of her materials. Um, but I'm going to be meeting with her tomorrow because she has new ideas that she might be using this funding for. So we're going to meet tomorrow to discuss what are some of those possible uh, ideas. I know she wants to start putting some of our maker spaces or activities in the library. So the libraries are not are more than just for reading. And so those are some of the things that we'll be discussing tomorrow. 18 is our FRC. So as you know, um, we haven't incurred expense uh, cost, but we have already in the planning stages and we approved the blueprints on September 13. Um, and I know that Mr. Vega has met with Mr. Arbendaris to, to continue with the work and the planning. For goal five on parent involvement, number the first one is in yellow because this is where we fund our LCAP forums and we haven't started that yet. Um, I will be having an, our first informational LCAP forum on, in December and that's really to go over our goals from the previous year and introduce the new goals. We start our LCAP forums for the new goals in January. Five is the parent trainings. We've held a lot of parent trainings but we've, we've held them at no cost because a lot of them have been provided for free or it's being provided from, for example, from our counselors or from Ms. Brisa Huerta Price with the project, the, the parent project. Six, um, it's the parent center at the FRC. Well, we have an incurred cost because first we need to make sure that the FRC is set up before we can open our parent center. We have a room already designated um, and we'll be purchasing materials. We talked about even having, for example, Rosetta Stone in, in the center. So if a parent wants to learn English, we have that option for them. And then the next one is, is um, we're now in facilities. So the one that we haven't touched, in, of course, we've been <laughs> facilities is the one we start incurring costs right away. But number eight is the cameras. Um, we, came, we, had already, um, we had already requested from our board uh, permission to seek proposals. And we actually had an agreement that came up to the board on August 23rd from Jensen and Hughes. And, and that was tabled. So that's where we're at with that one. I know that we're going to continue with conversations with this one. And then number 10, um, additional lights. This is an action that we would, can install additional lights. We haven't incurred any funds yet, but we have that. If we have projects that are pending or that we want to um, work on, so for example, for our ninth grade campuses or our junior highs, we do have some funding there, okay? And on the very last page, you see um, what was our adopted budget and what is our balance. So we spent um, a little bit um, less than half of, or over eight more, yeah, over half of it already. So I will be providing the next update somewhere around January or February, um, just, just to show you where we're at. Any questions? Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Move on with I, consent agenda. All items appearing will be acted upon by one motion. Without discussion, unless any item is pulled for separate consideration and action. I'd like to pull I-5. I-5? I want to I pull L3, since I cannot vote on it. Oh. Make a motion to uh, prove I1, I2, I4. A second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 All in favor, Romero, Calderon, Calderon, Jr., Castillo, myself. So um, I5. I3. Oh, I, we'll start with I3 first. I'll make a motion to prove I3. Second. Motion by Castillo, second by Galderon Jr. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Well, I uh, abstain. Yeah. Yeah. So all those in favor is Calderon, Calderon Jr., Castillo, myself, abstain was Mr. Romero. Mm -hmm. I-5. Five. I-5, five, the, the reason I wanted to pull this one is that we have two staff going to rally in New North Carolina. And um, the cost was going to be 4690 and when I asked about why they were going, they were going to get the most updated information on Smart Dude, school dude. or School Dude, I'm sorry, School Dude. And um, I made some calls. I made a call to Mr. Uh, Winslow, I believe is the name of the representative that represents our district, Thomas Winslow. 
Whitslow, and um, they're willing to send some staff to train our staff here. And it's less, it's for 4,600 and for two days. And some of the areas that w our staff would be training on would be on-site training, scope of the work would be account setups, use training, workforce consultation, messaging consultations, light data work, collection and entry, and changes, and system refinement. This is a two-day training. They would come and train as many staff as we want, and I believe that uh, we would get more for our money in that. So I'd like to table it and give the opportunity to our staff to contact Mr. Thomas, and maybe we can um, get more staff training. I think it's important that we train as many of staff as we need, and I, it's um, my understanding that we have a lot of our sites that use this training, I mean, this uh, system. So it would be good on our behalf to train as many staff and make our program efficient here within our district. Do you want to table that? Is that a motion? Yeah. I motion to table this. I'll second that. The motion by Calderon. Second by myself. Alvarado, all in favor, please state aye. 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 All in favor, Romero. Calderon, Calderon, Jr., Castillo, myself. Moving on to J information items. J1, superintendent report. Good evening, trustees. Good evening. Good evening, community. So Monday, November 11th, is uh, Veterans Day. And so in observance of Veterans Day, we will have no school at our school sites or at the district office as well. Uh, I want to thank all of our men and women who bravely served in the U.S. military. And I would also uh, like to acknowledge and thank our board uh, president, Mr. Enrique Alvarado, and Trustee Ciro Calderon for their service to our country. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, we had the Altar de Dia de los Muertos contest at Calexico High School. And that was held on Friday, November the 2nd. I do want to acknowledge uh, Ms. Eva Lara, who is our clinical social worker, Dr. Villalobos, our homeless liaison uh, at the FRC, along with Ms. Hortensia Armendariz for helping uh, coordinate this event. Uh, also, we had the Mexican Council involved in it. Uh, our Spanish teachers, also Ms. Espino uh, and Ms. Arellano, did an incredible job in organizing, working with our students, creating the altars and you know, doing an excellent uh, performance for, for our other students. I also want to thank Mario Beltran from the Mexican Consul. He gave a presentation on the history of Dia de los Muertos and there was um, great singing by our very own staff, Ms. Espino and Dr. Villalobos, who have an amazing voice. So I don't know if they have a card for uh, <laughs> any parties or anything like that, but they, they did an amazing job. Uh, they sing beautifully. Uh, and our students afterwards, they uh, partook in eating traditional bread and beverages. So it was just an amazing uh, ceremony to be a part of. Also, uh, MTSS, when it comes to core training, on Friday, October 26th, and Monday, October 29th, we had two full days of training on the multi-tiered systems of support, uh, commonly known, known as MTSS. Uh, the focus of MTSS is to look at our academic, our social, our emotional and our behavioral systems that we have in place throughout the district, specifically at all of our school sites. We're working on identifying uh, what are the interventions at tier one level, tier two level, tier three level, in order to provide the most appropriate level of intervention and use of the resources that we have in the district with all of our students. Um, some acknowledgements in regards to our students that uh, um, represent us. Uh, our girls cross country team has done incredibly well. They won the IVL championship on Saturday, November the 3rd here at Sunbeam Lake. And they will go on to compete um, uh, in CIF on November the 17th at Morley Park in San Diego. <clears throat> our girls tennis team also represented very well. They finished second in league and qualified for the CIF playoffs. Uh, they uh, actually made it to the second round as well of CIF. Uh, our volleyball team uh, finished second in IVL League, uh, but they lost in the first round of CIF. Uh, our boy, boys football team, uh, they made it to CIF, uh, and they unfortunately lost in the first round of the playoffs. I just want to congratulate all of our students, our coaches, 
for doing such an excellent job in representing uh, our district. Uh, holiday season is here. I know one of the students mentioned this, uh, but just to uh, reiterate it, all of our schools in the district will be closed. Uh, there will be no school from Monday, November the 19th through Friday, November the 23rd. Uh, we wish everyone a safe and a restful Thanksgiving break surrounded by family and friends. And then lastly, uh, upcoming activity, our next board meeting is scheduled for Thursday, December the 13th. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Gonzalez? Yes. Quick question, uh, quick comment. Maybe, you know, when our kids make it to CIF, you know, I think it should be, they should be recognized just like the way we recognize everybody. Absolutely, okay. they're coming up at the next board meeting. Oh, okay. oh yeah. maybe I missed that, uh, sorry. No, that's fine. But, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, J2, Measure V update. No update at this point. J3, Association Commons ACT, CSEA, J4, RLP Committee. Just briefly, quickly, we had a great presentation already, so I think I'm um, going to piggyback on them, and thank you, uh, Mr. Phil, Juan, for your, you and being here and your staff as well. Uh, just the only thing I'll add to that is uh, the office has been uh, providing uh, ROP board training for all of their representatives. So I had a chance to participate in that, almost a three-hour workshop, just reviewing all the services, uh, procedures, uh, and the projects they offer. So thank you for that. Uh, a lot of good work happening there, and I'm glad to see you know the results happening and, and the services offered here in our district. So thank you. That's it. Thank you. J5 board reports, Mr. Romero. I want to congratulate Dual School for their um, highest attendance award and all the students and employees that were recognized. And I would like to uh, thank the veterans on our board and in our district that have served our country in a valiant manner. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Calderon. Thank you. And also, to um, piggyback on that, thank, uh, congratulations to all those students and, and, and to dual school for, uh, for doing a great job. Uh, I had a chance to go to uh, the high school the other day, had a chance to visit uh, specifically Mr. Jaime uh, and uh, with the help of Ms. Williams and uh, showing me the great things that he's doing in that class for computers and again technology um, uh, is here to stay. It's not going, technology is not going anywhere. So um, also um, I just want to say that uh, we need to treat everybody the same Okay, and I've said it before and I will say it again. Uh, no employee of ours is less than the other uh, from the top to the bottom. So, uh, yes, there are positions of, uh, um, that we need to respect. However, um, I consider the same, that brand new uh, two-hour employee than, than Mr. Gonzalez. So, uh, hopefully... Um, we can uh, learn to respect that and that our respect is um, it needs to be given regardless of how we feel about uh, uh, about others and last but not least um, hopefully we can get um, uh, some uh, We can get something done in the next couple. Uh, I have a couple of things, but I'll, I'll wait for my. Thank you. Mr. Carlito, Jr. It's my turn. All right. <clears throat> well, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Um, as always, congratulations to all the students and staff that were actually awarded tonight. Um, that's good to see that we still have these awards. Also, thanks to all the veterans that serve our country. Um, again, thank you this weekend. And um, most important, congratulations to Mr. Romero and Mr. Calderon for your election, um, a clean, clean election, and thank you for, for, uh, for everything. And also, um, I'd like to take this time to thank all the voters out there for taking the time and making the, their vote counts. And you probably, my wife would say that was crazy, but you know what? Today, uh, I actually went on a field trip with two... Um, Kindergarten classes in Colexico, from Colexico to the uh, Farm Smart. Mm -hmm. 
this is a resource that we should be exploiting because it's not only for kids, but it's for adults. I mean, I learned today the topic was this here. And this is grown not only in the valley, but throughout the world. Um, to see the faces of our kids and, and see that they're actually learning something. I learned a lot today, and I was born here and raised here. This is, I mean, this is grown here year round. But most important, what this plant signifies. I mean, it's been around for many, many, many years. Um, I don't know if all, all of you know, but there's certain parts to this plant. And this is what the kids were, were actually um, taught. This is the tassel. This is the, um, oh wow, now I'm, <laughs> um, not, uh, what is it called? Uh, oh wow, what is it called? Someone out? Uh, it has a name. Well, regardless of what its name, um, I thought that the corn just grew on the, on the hut, but it doesn't. This actually releases pollen, which then falls into these, um, um, they have a name. I mean, whatever they are, and actually that's what creates the corn. I always thought the corn just grew from there, but this also actually takes important in a role here. It falls in here, and then it creates the corn. And I also see, I mean, the kids learned about how, what corn is being used. Of. I mean, they're making styrofoam out of corn. They're making plastics out of corn. Of course, foods everywhere made out of corn. And also fuel, as you know, the evil. But I mean, not only did the kids get to see or get this education, but they also were able to go into what they're also doing. They have dairies. They have fields where they have radishes. The kids were able to go and pick 10 radishes a piece. And they were out there and they were just having a lot of fun. So um, I know that not a lot of our uh, school sites use this um, resource, but I think we should. I left um, some flyers there for some of the uh, school sites if they want to go. I think it's very important that we teach our kids where the food comes and why it's important that this here in the valley is gold. And why? Because there's a lot of it here, but we don't realize that what this plant can bring. It also feeds cattle, and cattle, we, of course, we get milk and meats and so forth. So it was quite interesting. Um, there's not many school sites that use this resource, but I would suggest if we have some principles here that to start looking into it. And it's not only for the younger kids, but also they're moving up to the junior highs and high schools because they understand that some of these kids are taking vocational classes and they teach them, you know, uh, advanced courses in, in agriculture and everything else. So that's why I brought it here. I think it was a show and tell, but it's important. It's, oh, it's a tassel and the silk. It's called a silk. So the, it just falls in there and it creates the corn. So with that said, um, I have nothing else other than thank you for being here tonight and let's, let's educate our kids. Thank you. Sure. I think we're going to send you on field trips more often now. Yeah. For that. <laughs> well, it, it is because um, when I was working, my wife attended most of the field trips yeah. and now uh, we're both able to attend and it's not even our kids, but we had a, she went with me and we had a lot of fun. I mean, we had 40 kids on a bus and by the Bus driver was very professional, very on time and everything. He made it work, all the kids behaved, and it was great to see what we're doing with our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, there's a lot of great things happening in our district, and I think you know these are examples of some. We've heard of some in our reports. Um, I had a chance to visit uh, uh, the high school as well for the altar and the performances, and uh, a lot of good things happening, and certainly thanking our teachers and staff for that as well. Um, the MTSS, I think that's something we're going to hear a lot more about, uh, certainly through, uh, you know, the positive behavior and those interventions. MTSS, I know some sites are doing conscious discipline and others, but it really goes to the heart of the kids now, teaching the whole child. We're hearing a lot about trauma-informed education, which is, you know, affects their education in school, uh, their attitude, so that's very positive. So I'm glad we're uh, participating in that. Um, I know our, our schools are doing good things. You know, we know WASC uh, through the high school and their accreditation was a, uh, 
a highlight for the district. I'm pleased to know that, you know, through uh, Schools to Watch, we have uh, Enrique Camarena continuing on that path, and hopefully next year, um, William Moreno. So we'll hear, I think we'll hear more about that. It takes a lot of work, but it really highlights the learning environment, the culture, the instruction, the supports that our schools have. So that's exciting news. Um, on another note, uh, I think, I don't know if we mentioned it, Garth Isom, previous uh, high school principal, passed away not too long ago. I think uh, end of September, October. So if you haven't heard, yeah, he was a principal here at the high school for a number of years. Uh, a lot of us probably remember him, but uh, just want to mention him as well. Um, and I think, oh, one last thing. Uh, Calexco Women's Improvement Club, they're having their annual ham dinner for student scholarships. If anyone's interested, you know, there's tickets available for that. I have to put that plug in. That is on November 15th, next Thursday. Again, all funds, proceeds go to student scholarships, which a number of our kids benefit from. So if you're interested, let me know or find somebody. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Castillo. just want to thank everyone for being here tonight, um, for all the students that are that here present. And all those that presented also as well. Lisa, thank you for a job well done on the LCAP, on the update. Excellent work. Everybody that helped you in that, thank them also as well. And IBROP that was here also as well. Dual school, um, everybody's been saying the same thing. Just congratulate them. Keep on with that also as well. And to our veterans, everybody that served, um, just want to, you know, thank them and just hold them in remembrance. And uh, for uh, all the victims uh, from today from Thousand Oaks also as well. Uh, hold them in your prayers tonight. Um, I know there's still some that are uh, in the hospital. Um, other than that, just want to you know, say thanks and go ahead and start with this uh, meeting for tonight. K discussion, possible action. K1, maintenance and operation replacement of fleet vehicle proposals. Oh, we still have, hold on real quick. Have, you guys want to speak right now? Or do you guys want to, yeah? All right, Ms. Bravo. Good evening, everyone. I was asked by my coworkers um, to speak, to help them out here. Uh, first of all, my name is Maria Bravo. I am the Family Resource Center Student Services Specialist. Uh, in the past, I've held various positions within the union here, and they trust me, so they come forward to me when they have any issues. But I will begin with, in recent history, in the last four fiscal years, roughly $85,000 have been budgeted for MNO vehicle replacement. On one occasion, the district purchased transport vans instead. On two occasions, the monies were swept into the general fund and the department was denied the ability to purchase those vehicles. Last year, the district purchased two simple trucks with no toolboxes or ladder racks and another transport van. The transport vans are used mostly for staff from all over the district to attend trainings and for small athletic teams. Since May 10, 2018, at the regular scheduled board meeting, the MNO staff has waited for a district administration to decide on a plan to provide the department with new and safe work vehicles. Since August 31st, MNO has been waiting for a plan after the submittal of the group letter that was submitted on August 30th to the superintendent to deliver to you. I believe you all have this letter. In recent years, we have seen an emphasis on providing safe, reliable vehicles for student and staff transport. HVAC systems have been highlighted as a determining factor for student and staff transportation, yet, this has not been a determining factor for maintenance staff to transport themselves to and from school sites, part houses, and stores in order to perform their duties. The practice of handing down student and staff transportation vehicles after they are deemed unsafe or dilapidated for students and staff but acceptable for maintenance personnel is unacceptable. The majority of the fleet predates anti-lock brake systems and airbags. When inquiring about the fleet's condition, trustees ask about the mileage of the vehicle. It is the wear and tear of a vehicle that determines the safe and unsafe conditions. Where door handles, window handles, controls, 
car seats are in unsatisfactory condition and pose a tremendous danger for the staff. The need of proper vehicles with appropriate toolboxes, ladder racks, is detrimental to better provide the different services the maintenance staff represent and they have to complete their duties. We all know that if they don't go out to do a work order at a work site, we have parents, students, and staff complaining. If these conditions are acceptable for you to continue prolonging this issue, then we interpret this as the maintenance and operations as being considered second class employees by the district administration and majority of the trustees. This is clearly an, uns an issue of an unsafe work environment. The maintenance staff cannot continue to be subjected to these unsafe and hazardous working conditions. We ask that you do not continue to delay this item and move forward. It is detrimental to the safety of these employees. Thank you. Thank you. Crystal La Rosa. Good evening, trustees. Um, Superintendent Gonzalez. Um, congratulations to uh, the trustees who just won re-election. Um, I just want to just add a little information that you may not have gotten in letters or in or Ms. Bravo's statement. And um, one, of the, one of the issues is we don't just have vehicles that are roughly 20 years old, but we, have, we don't have enough vehicles. Right now we, we have paired um, employees and there's some employees here that um, they work together as, as, as a team because they don't have a vehicle of their own. Um, some of them have, drive a vehicle because somebody's not working this comp and the vehicle's free right now. So, um, but <coughs> we've been watching the, the board meetings and watching the discussion go back and forth on video and um, we've seen some progress. We're very pleased with um, the fact that the administration has brought forward proposals, has brought forward um, options as directed by the board. So we could see some movement there. The only, one of the biggest concerns that, that, that I can see is several of the options that, that are gonna be presented have a turnaround time of four to six months that's an awful long time for, to, to ask the employees to continue to, um, to endure the conditions that they're enduring right now. So, me, as a supervisor, I'll advocate for, for the employee's safety as for my own, because I drive one of those type of vehicles. Um, that we look at options that I didn't see up in the, in the, in the agenda back, backup information, options that, that we, we can purchase, and then I heard a number of thrown around five vehicles, at least five vehicles right now, somewhere we can go and pick them up and, and bring them here in a short time frame. And that'll, at the very minimum, I can keep the guys in pairs, but I can get rid of five pathetic vehicles and they'll be at least in safe vehicle. They'll be working in pairs. We won't have enough vehicles still, but we'll have safe vehicles. So um, those are my two cents. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Armando Montoya. Good evening to you all. My name is Armando Montoya, and I'm a grounds worker too. And uh, well, most people think that I'm crazy or a risk taker because the way I drive or vehicles that I use. But um, here at the district, I've always used a vehicle that has been uh, down or not in safe conditions. And like I tell them, I rather drive that vehicle than walk where I have to go. Uh, another thing is that at least with the school district vehicle, we have insurance. So like if I tell my wife, if anything happens to me, I'm insured or taken care of by the district. Um, I do drive Mad Max, which is an old food service truck that was chopped. 
uh, half of the steering wheel is missing and it's just the, the metal on it. Um, I do pull the trailer and when we do pull the trailer, we pull heavy equipment on it. So it is uh, dangerous, but that's the only vehicle we have for towing and the best that we have. Before that, I had the old uh, FFA uh, Chivero, which was a vehicle that had only a two-speed transmission because uh, only first and second worked. If I had to go to El Centro for supplies, I had to go all the way down Dogwood. Max speed you could go with that two-speed transmission was 40. Uh, the catalytic converter was plugged up. So what we had to do to replace, instead of they didn't want to spend $400 to repair it because then the, the transmission was another 2000 We got a hacksaw, cut it right before it, and had to drive it like that so it sounded like it had open headers. And uh, you would get the exhaust system into your in the vehicle, so you always drove with the windows down, no AC in both Mad Max or the Chivero. Uh, the seatbelts get stuck on it. Uh, one of the doors does not open, only for, through the inside. So there's always a safety concern for the passenger. Um, that's all I would like to say about the vehicles that I drive here. Currently, I do drive the little Ford Ranger, which is decent condition compared to those other ones. I feel real safe in that, but other people would not drive that truck, but I, I would. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, um, board members, Superintendent Gonzalez, uh, community, colleagues, everyone in attendance. My name is Cesar Vega, I'm your assistant super business, and I'm here to follow up on our conversation that we had at the last board meeting regarding the five vehicles that you directed me to look into purchasing. So as you recall, I don't know if you want me to go through the whole presentation, uh, there was a last minute update that I added to the presentation, so hopefully you have the revised agendas. Uh, or a rather presentation. So as I shared with you, we had a number, we had three proposals on the table the last time. Uh, I will talk about this one in particular first uh, because at that time that was the lowest uh, uh, proposal. Uh, there's a new concept that I learned uh, while I was asking for the purchasing price of five vehicles in this uh, particular uh, company. Uh, what they do, they have what they call a prepaid lease, which mimics a purchase. Uh, you pay for the vehicles, you write one check, you pay for the vehicles all at once, uh, like you would do on a regular purchase. The difference is that you wait uh, 12 months before you get the pink slip. Normally there are four cents associated with the final uh, before you get the pink slip, the final transaction per vehicle, but those, that, those fees are waived. That's what I've been told. Um, so it, it, it's, if you ask me to buy these vehicles at this point, that would be the fastest way that I could order them because we have a bid that can we piggyback on. Uh, I am told that the time is less than six months, okay? Uh, they will never give me an exact an exact date because that's it's they're they're unable to predict you know how fast they can be uh, built, but I've seen uh, these vehicles come in within three months, uh, but that's again that is it, it's it's just you know something that it happens but you know that 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 could be the best case scenario, worst case scenario it may take up to five or six months. Um, again, this is through a prepaid lease which again, you cut one check, you pay it, and your vehicles are ordered, and then uh, you just wait for them to arrive. Uh, total cost for five vehicles is $163,710. That is the purchase price for all those five vehicles. Uh, the other option, and I'll move to the next slide. Uh, today we received a proposal from Robinson Ford. Uh, same type of vehicles, Ford F-250s, uh, v single caps, uh, automatic transmissions, uh, royal utility beds with the ladder racks. So it's pretty much the same vehicle. Uh, they were uh, about 40, uh, I want to say about $44 difference between each vehicle. I mean, they're really, among, that's the lowest uh, bid thus far, the lowest proposal thus far. Uh, like I said, it just came in today. 
Uh, the purchase price is one hundred and sixty three thousand four hundred and ninety. Uh, but this will require me to go out and bid. Uh, that's, again, it will take longer than five, six months if I have to go out, create my own bid, and then go, you know, put it out there and solicit uh, people to uh, respond to it. It will probably, you're looking at about seven months by the time, I mean, worst case scenario, seven months by the time we get those vehicles. That being said, uh, last weekend I attended a training uh, up in, uh, Ontario, and as I was driving down, uh, there's a dealer in Riverside County that has already uh, pre-made uh, utility uh, work trucks, the ones that we are looking at. Uh, the dealer is called Fritz Ford. Um, they are a little bit more expensive. They're about $36,000 each, uh, but those are already made. Uh, Right now, the threshold before we have to go out and bid is 92500 So anything below that, we, can, uh, we don't have to go out and bid. We can just uh, issue a purchase order upon your approval. Um, 92500 No, overall. overall. Overall, sir. Yes, overall. So with that amount of money, I mean, I, we're looking at about two vehicles, the most that we can buy right off the get-go. We could do that if that is your decision, your recommendation, uh, while I go out and bid for the vehicles that we need. Uh, my idea was to go out and bid for the total number of vehicles so that we can get the most, uh, the more you buy, the lower the price. Uh, and then put together a plan. Uh, obviously, we have to look at the budget. That is, a, that is a major concern. But so that we can at least Again, it's up to you, but so we can at least do something. Uh, we can right away, if you give me the, the, the directive, purchase a couple, and then allow me to go out and bid so that we can solicit the lowest responsible uh, price per vehicle. The other option, as I explained, is uh, we can go buy the five vehicles right now with a prepaid lease, but again, you're looking at a four to six month uh, turnaround time uh, before we get the vehicle. And uh, we have a piggybackable bid that we can go through that, so we don't have to go out and bid. That's why you know we can just go ahead and proceed if you give me that directive. Uh, that is the update that I have for you, and uh, I'm seeking your advice, your recommendation as to how you how you would like me to proceed. You just mentioned something really uh, funny, yes, and uh, well, people may have find it funny, but I don't find it funny. Um, you said that it can, uh, the uh, the price or the amount of money is the concern. Uh, we can make that money back. Money, if you lose money, you will gain money. You will eventually make money. Okay. What you cannot get back is if one of those people uh, has an accident. If somebody has an accident, loses an arm, a leg, or dies, God forbid, I'm sorry. Something happens. We, not, we don't get that person back. Yes. yes. They're going to get uh, insurance and they're going to be covered, but you cannot put a price on a life. Completely agree with you, sir. Okay. Absolutely. So um, uh, I'm really concerned, not about your words, but I'm really concerned that we are trying, that we are postponing this over and over. Okay. When we have people driving, uh, 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 we have uh, our, our, our uh, employees driving vehicles that are not safe. I agree gonna, with you, sir. I'm, going to, I'm not going to say that they are not that they are not uh, suitable for the road. They are dangerous. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. So, you know, I would like for us to at least consider uh, buying some vehicles right away and then moving forward. Okay, uh, we cannot pay. We cannot put a price on safety. Okay, I'm willing to discuss it, and I don't want to get mad and upset because I know how I get when I get upset. But at least let's talk about it. At least let's uh, make some uh, uh, some movement on this. Okay. I just want to add uh, something ahead. real quick. I just want to make a motion to purchase the two vehicles right now. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll let's go that. off with the. I'm still not done with the with the other motion. That way, we could do a piggyback option, the one that you said. That way, we could purchase um, those other five vehicles right right off the bat. Preview. Right now, yeah. Well, I mean, if we could get the two and another five. Okay, first of all, 
you're failing to look at the financial picture. Okay? We, we, we need you to fly. Uh, two right now, okay, I mean, that's possible, buy two right now. Because it's says it's, they're there. So. But this issue didn't come, this 2012, it bothered me. Yeah, correct. This issue did not come overnight. Where has it been since 2012? You know, uh, what happened to the, the fire boards didn't act on this, didn't care of the safety of our, of our workers. What happened? So we got to be careful now. Okay, buy what we can, it, what we can financially afford. Yes, we do care about the fiscal well-being of, of, of our workers. So if we could buy two right now and then pick it back off for three more. And Omega. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. I don't mean to cut you off. Um, would, we, would we be fine if we were to purchase those two plus the other five? I just a quick yes or no. Uh, that is a real hard question for me to answer, um, Mr. President, because it's I haven't finalized. And I go back to the first interim. I know that I sound redundant. I don't know where we are fiscally at the moment. Um, I would say that typically the hardest thing to recover is from a structural deficit. But then there are things that are one time. Uh, could we find a savings somewhere else? We could. We could look at areas that we can maybe reduce budget to maybe fit one or two, I don't know. But again, I, I don't feel comfortable giving you an answer right now because I don't know where the budget is. If you look at seven, that's $259,000. Okay, where are you gonna cut? You, you gotta cut from somewhere. Where will you cut? Will you cut from um, overtime? Uh, where are you gonna cut from to make up the 259? So if you go if you go with five at thirty seven thousand each, you know that's under two hundred thousand dollars. I mean every little bit's gonna have, we have a structural deficit already. Oh, yeah, correct. And I think um, Ms. Carolina Rodriguez made it clear. So I understand, and I'm not downplaying safety. It is important. Um, but we asked, if I recall, not only to buy five trucks, but also a plan because we still have 20, 20 vehicles to replace? Total of 21. Or 21. 21. Yeah, 21. So mm -hmm. that's not going to get us anywhere. So yeah. we need a plan to see, uh, according to our budget, mm -hmm. so how many are we going to replace annually. Right. I mean, we can give them five right now, but what's going to happen next year or the year after and so forth? I mean, we need, um, according to our budget, we need to have a plan. Absolutely. How many we're going to... Um, phase out every year. Absolutely, yes, we do need a plan for those 21 vehicles. So there's a, a motion on the floor, correct? Yes. If correct. I, oh, you wanna repeat your motion? Motion wants to purchase the two plus uh, piggyback off for the other five. And if I can maybe suggest. Five, that's five though. That's his <laughs> or you wanna do, or I can refer to the three. Yeah, I mean, two if it's gonna three. get past two and three, if we could pass it right now, I'd rather do it. You're past two and three right now. Can, can I suggest, and also yes, correct sir. me if I'm wrong, if we can't do this, Mr. Vega or Mr. Gonzalez, uh, along with the same motion, then can we also include the purchase of the additional five to arrive July 1st or soon after the next fiscal year so we can order them now and have them as soon as possible? So we would have to, we could budget for them? It'd be in the next fiscal year. Right. If we get them in July, if it's going to take a couple months. To you don't already have projections for are you talking about two and three and then year. another five? That's for next fiscal year. Okay. You gotta look at the following. You gotta look at so the fund balance. Fund. You don't, don't be fiscally irresponsible. You gotta look at the, at the fund balance. It doesn't matter if you spend it in May or you spend it on next year. You're gonna, you're gonna hit your fund balance. You gotta get, get your plan first. Find out what, you, what your uh, media reports look like. I mean, you could also look at the cost also as well that we're spending also as well. That was one of those things that, I mean, you have to look at. You have to you know, foresee that also as well. If you're going to buy new vehicles, you're going to cut the cost as whatever you're paying every year. Because every year they were, they were paying how much was it? It was a ridiculous amount that they were paying just for services and stuff like that. So if you cut that, if you cut the fuel cost, maintenance. I mean, maintenance and all that, you're saving some money off of that also as well. Well, on the floor right now is to buy two and, and three. Then, um, or buy three more, correct? Correct. Yeah, I, piggyback well, off. You need to think. And, okay, and we also need to, a plan, correct? Yes, sir. So and there's going to be a total for this, five total this year. And which, is about, and, and which is about two. Yeah, well, two and a band. Yeah, okay. So, all right, I second that. And um, we need a plan, though. 
we need a plan because we can't just start buying when our, we don't even know how much money we have. Right. So we well, got negotiations. Absolutely. We got absolutely. Once I, I go through our first interim and I look at the financials, if the board so desires, I can uh, propose maybe a plan uh, around January yeah. so that I can uh, share with you how we can approach this. Uh, I think we cannot go wrong with go out and bid. Uh, we're not required to purchase if we go out and bid, but at least will give us an idea of the market that we can control mm -hmm. and maybe make a recommendation based upon that, uh, those numbers. So that's not what's on the table. So a motion, motion, motion was made for purchase, purchase two and then piggyback for three. For three. three. Seconded by Calderon. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor is Romero, Calderon, Calderon, Junior Castillo, myself. Thank you, board. Thank you. Moving on to L. Action item consideration and action approval of the following items. L1, authorization to seek bids for district wide security patrol services. You know, um, before we go, I have a comment on this. Um, this is probably, well, at least my first contract that had a rebidding. All our other contracts have been open for possible additional years. So um, I guess legal, with legal, we have to go out to bid. But I just Correct. wanted to comment on, on that. And so. Do we have to, do we have to go out and bid? Yes. Because the way it's we do. written, yes. Correct. When we approved it. Yeah, we, were concerned. we should have had a stipulation that we could op we could go out and extend it. It right. wasn't done. No. So if you want to do that from now on, correct. You know, then well, let's do it. But we do it in every other contract, right? But it wasn't done for that one. That wasn't done for that. So I mean, we've done other contracts, but we say uh, approved. That uh, is correct. You're right, Mr. Gallardo. But it, I, I don't understand why it wasn't done for this contract. I think maybe because it was the first time with, with this company, so maybe they wanted to see how they worked out. But they sh it should it would have been better if it had been added there. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think their performance speaks for itself. So, I mean, based on the incidents that we've had. Uh, yeah, but well. legally we can do it. Yeah, I understand. Legally, and there's we something. Can. That, well, I Correct. motion to go out to bid. We there's have to. no other question. So there's a motion. I'll go ahead and second that. Motion by Calderon, second by myself. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor is Romero, Calderon, Calderon Jr., Castillo, myself. Moving on to L2. Agreement renewal between Calexico Unified School District and Sanders Incorporated for architectural services. I move we approve. Second. Uh, taking with this, I would like to discuss this. Go ahead. Um, we talk about this. We talk about this every time it comes. Uh, this comes around. And now, this contract uh, just to give a contract to somebody. I don't get it. There's nobody else in the county that can do this work. Or can we go out to bid? Good. Well, one problem we have, um, if I may say so, is he's registered with DSA on our Measure B projects. If we were to change architect, yeah. that's going to delay the construction of our projects. Correct. And we may lose a lot. So we no, we are going to lose a lot because yeah. we are in, in line right now to match our funds. Exactly. Yep. If we go elsewhere and we're gonna position, suffer yeah. and not us but our kids because we were not going to be able to do what we planned and hopefully in two years we'll get the measure b projects completed well and then how much is this contract for i'm heading carlos i don't know let me check May, may I assist you, Superintendent? Go ahead, Mr. Mr. That, respectfully. Uh, there is no uh, set amount. It's by the, the when you approve uh, the contract originally, you approve it with a condition to with an option for another two-year term. Mm -hmm. uh, to give you a number, we have to look at the entire project that he has under Measure B yes. to uh, 
give you what the total amount could be? Yeah. Well, we know what he has on his hands right now. We have the first um, 16 units plus Correct. the plus the uh, drive the parking lot. Right. That's what he has on his hand and our culinary facility. Exactly. Right now, that is the one item that is a DSA. Yes. And uh, it, that's very critical uh, for him to comment on any comments that DSA may have. Yeah. So there's a motion by two. Made by but how, many, by how many years are we going to? Two years. Two years? Uh, two years. That's, gonna, yeah. that's what it's going to take who, to. Who motion? You motion? Richard. I'll second it. I'll second it by Castillo. Yeah. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Calderon Jr., Castillo, myself. Moving on to L3, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and school facility consultants regarding a school facility's need analysis justification study for impact fees. I move. Is this a recurring? Uh, I don't think so. No, this is for actually uh, to have something in place in regards to developer fees, which are level one, level two, level three. Oh, okay. So we had one in place, but it expired in June. So I'm, this I'm is struck. critical that we have in place. I was making a move. We're okay. okay. I second. Yeah. Motion by Mr. Romero. Second by Calderon. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor, aye. Romero. Calderon, Calderon Jr., Castillo, myself. Moving on to L4, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Simon Silva for professional development services and art for K. To two grades, second grades. Is Lucio not here today? Oh, he's he's definitely no. here. Right. Yeah, this well, is. What well, can you tell us about this, uh, Mister? Or oh, is it yours? Yeah, it, it is. is. Um, you know, Mister uh, Simon Silva. He's world-renowned artist, um, and he does an incredible job in regards to artwork. But uh, he also does a lot of professional development. Uh, a lot of professional development in regards to staff and regards to providing services to parents. And so one of the areas that we want for him to provide professional development is to our teachers, specifically in the kinder through the second grade, uh, and also provide training for our parents as well. And so he comes uh, highly recommended, like I mentioned, um, uh, Simon Silva is uh, a renowned artist and uh, one that uh, his um, knowledge would uh, greatly, um, uh, is one that would be benefit our teachers and therefore our students in the classroom. Is this training just one time? It's just one? It's just one time. full day and a parent training as well. Two hour parent training. Correct. I motion to approve. Was there a motion? Yeah. Motion by Calderon Jr. I second with the uh, with discussion. Um, so it says includes two hours for parent uh, event and three hours of on-site training for certificate staff, yada, 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 yada. Um, how many teachers is he going to train? Did he give a, uh, a max or can we just? Go ahead, Mr. Padilla. Good evening. We're working with a cohort of K-2 teachers across the, uh, across the district. It was a cohort of teachers that applied that they were very interested in having their skills accelerated and just reimagining instruction. And so we thought they were the perfect group to start a training where he would really start working with them and developing um, creativity and overall just 21st century skills targeting our, our very young, young learners. So that group is about, I want to say it's about 22 teachers. How about parents? So the parents, um, as an interesting thing that we're, that we're, we're, right now we're considering, we definitely want to target the parents of the teachers that are participating, but we're thinking of expanding beyond that group just because usually it's, it's hard to get parents to come in, so we want to do a real strong campaign. As a matter of fact, they're going to be having parent conferences in December, so those 22 teachers uh, will be already announcing to their, during parent conference when they meet with their parents one-to-one, -one, advocating that they participate in the event. Uh, and they're welcome to bring their children with them as part of the training as and, well. And Mr. Padilla, the only reason I ask is mm -hmm. that we just heard Ms. Ramirez earlier where she's mm -hmm. having issues with parent mm -hmm. participation. And I believe this would be a great mm -hmm. incentive for our parents to bring them in. Yeah, we, them yeah we'll probably go beyond the 22 in, in, in terms of, of the invitation for the parents. Yeah. yeah. Question just as well, you know, just, it's a lot of money, we know that. Mm -hmm. um, did we? Did you have a check with other districts to see if this is what they're they're also paying the same amount, or with the migrant office? Is this a similar cost they're paying? I, I didn't compare. I mean, I did did have an opportunity to meet with him. 
Uh, he showed me his presentation. We went over it. I mean, it was, it was we probably had about a good one-hour conversation. We had a discussion about his ideas, got to see a, a good preview of, of his uh, presentation, and I really felt that it really matched very well. So I never went and found out what he charged right. other, other organizations. But really, I, I think it's about uh, 3500 just for the teacher portion, for 22 teachers. Um, I think it's, it's at a very good cost. And then are there plans or thoughts for follow-up, or is this just like a one-time thing? We, we had conversations between whether going with a one-day or a two-day. At this point, we decided to go for one day, and then there, depending on that day, may perhaps go with another cohort as well. We're working with different cohorts. We thought the best match was our K2 group. Uh, it was a... It was a, we came to that consensus both in the conversations with him and also in, in our conversations. And so definitely uh, we, we potentially could be exploring adding other groups after this, after this training. So basically he's open, so he doesn't care if there's a, full, uh, a room full of teachers and parents. So well, he just wants to get it out. He wants to... He, he's very experienced, and, and, and he has a new book that was catered a lot more to education. It was specific. We know he's an artist, but he's been doing a lot more work lately, also just focusing on education uh, as a book that focuses strongly on creativity in the classroom. And so when I saw his presentation, I did feel real comfortable that he was targeting uh, not just creativity in general, but specifically to, to educators. And, and it's a topic that we've been having a lot within our, within our own school district, and we felt it was a real good match. He's gonna have, um, really at this point, that's our group size. I think if subs permit, and we have a few, more, a few more spots, we can find a way to maybe add a few more teachers, but that's currently the, the size of the cohort that we have. The cost that you have here, does that include substitutes and anything for these teachers? That just includes the contract to pay him. It does? It, that just includes, oh. the, no, 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 just the cost to pay him. It, would, it does not include. Substitutes. That's all at 22. Uh, how many other schools has he uh, done this to? I know on his website he referenced tons of schools and testimonials. Uh, I just don't see the connection here. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know he's an artist, but, uh, mm -hmm. and supposedly he's into the ed educational field now, mm -hmm. but I just don't see the connection. His wife is a current teacher, so he has a lot of family there in education. So he has a strong just connection in, in terms with, with family. Uh, and like I said, his book is catering education. Um, I mean, foster the culture, curiosity, and creativity in the classroom? No. So like, for example, one of the- I mean, Especially with kindergartners, I mean- Yeah, so, so, uh, for, so just to give you like an example, right? So one of the things that happens is that in school, we're very much inclined to define things as right or wrong, right? It's just the nature of education. You do something and, 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 and we have that tendency to score it. And so really the, one of the big messages with creativity is that it it's really goes with that, it, get, it goes against that mode. It's about self-expression. When a child expresses themselves, it's really hard to say, oh, you're wrong when it's your form of expression. And so we have a lot of, of, of assumptions and practices that we have within our, 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 our school, not just in creativity, but a lot of them in general, where I really think he's gonna be real supportive to say, you know what, is this really the best practice? It's common practice when it comes to creativity. So again, when it comes to creativity, it's the expression of the person, but we have that very strong tendency to always say, to grade it, or to score it, or to measure it. And I think coming from a person like him, he has that real strong background, that reputation, that history, that upbringing, where he grew up successfully from, from an area very much like ourselves, and, and, and proven very successful with it, and that hopefully that and I'm makes not sense. I'm not convinced. I'm mm -hmm. I'm not convinced of this. Mm -hmm. Let's call for the question. So, so there was a motion. There was a motion by Calderon, and then it was seconded by Calderon. So all those in favor, please state aye. 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 I oppose. I oppose too. Uh, well, I abstain. He's, he's my relative, so I can't, I can't vote on it. Thank you. It would have been the, 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 the 45 or 42 plus another 22 for subs. Yes? 22 teachers, 22 well, subs. Let's, okay. Let's go, let's go on. All five. Agreements between Collective Unified School District and Classworks for a one-year software subscription for district-wide school sites. So this is coming up for a renewal. This is a software program that we already use at our school sites and so we're just bringing it to the board as a renewal i'll make a motion to approve second motion by myself seconded by calderon also fair please did i aye, aye. aye. 
Aye. All those in favor of the medal, Calderon, Calderon Jr., Castillo, myself. Moving on to L6, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Imperial Valley College Educational Challenge Search Program for annual program services for Calexico High School. I move to approve. Second. Motion by Calderon, second by Romero. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Calderon Jr., Castillo, myself. Moving on to L7. Service agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Bright Bites Incorporated for the 2018-19 school year for data and analytics platform, which measures and links technology use and education to learning outcomes. So this is a software that we currently use already. So we're bringing this one back as a renewal to the board. Uh, so what it does is it allow us, allows us to look at the data, uh, specifically with all the implementation of the technology programs that we have in place. And we're able to get an idea if those programs are actually working. I mean, not just this program here, but do we take surveys from our staff just to see if these programs are actually working? Absolutely. <laughs> this is staff this? Yeah. This yeah. staff uses. This yeah. is what it allows us to do the survey, okay. poll, and then it actually gives us a data response. Okay. Yeah. As well as students and parents, too. You know? okay. Correct. Right. Motion to approve. I'll second. Motion by Calderon, second by myself. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those in favor, Mr. Romero, Calderon, Calderon Jr., Castillo, myself. Moving on to L8, authorization to seek proposals for E-rate services for the 2019-2020 school year. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Castillo, second by Calderon. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those in favor, Mr. Romero, Calderon, Calderon Jr., Castillo, myself. Moving on to L9, acceptance of release of property loss claims for Mr. Alberto Reyes. Move motion. to approve. Second. Motion by Calderon, second by Calderon Jr. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Calderon Jr., Castillo, myself. Moving on to L10, revision of job description, noon duty aid. Motion to approve. I'll second. <coughs> Motion by Calderon Jr., second by myself. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Calderon Jr., Castillo, myself. L11, resolution for Calexico Unified School District to become subject to California Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Procedures. All right, I'll let Mr. Vega go into a little bit more in detail with this Absolutely. one. He has a lot more expertise in this area. Absolutely. So, as you know, um, this is for construction purposes only. Uh, as you know, uh, right now, the district uh, is subject to public works for any work over $15,000. We literally have to go out and bid. Uh, the California Uniform Construction Cost Accounting Act uh, they call it the cupcakes or CAPCA, uh, is another authorized, valid, and widely used uh, format throughout the, throughout the state of California because it gives us more flexibility when it comes to emergency or construction uh, repairs. If I can give you an example, we just had the Varney Gym. We had to go through an entire process through a resolution to get the work done where had we been part of this um, uh, act, uh, we could have just done the work right away with no further delays. This is something that is, like I said, very commonly used throughout the state. Uh, I, I don't know how many districts, uh, but I can tell you that the ones that I've been part of, it's been a very successful program because it gives us more flexibility. Uh, that's not to say that we, can, we cannot go back and bid. If the board so desires, we can go back and bid. But this is just another option that we can have when there are needs such as the one that I just mentioned, it would uh, tremendously help us uh, execute the work. Well, um, yes, sir. Uh, we are, among other things, fiscally responsible for uh, the finances <coughs> for this district. Yes, sir. So what you're telling me is that with this, you can bypass. No, 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 no. Well, that's that's what you right. just said. That that's another avenue. So, if we don't have a say. If something happens, he ever, Carlos already knows that if there's a there's a, an emergency, he calls the board president, and then he will let him know yay or nay, and he right. can we we can deal with that later at later meeting. But this, you're saying that with this you can bypass all that. No, no, no. What did you let, say? Let, let me clarify that for you, sir. Thank you for bringing that up. But what I'm saying, any the the procurement, the bidding of it is. The one that we don't have to go up and bid at forty uh, up until forty five thousand. Any proposal that we get though, you still have to approve it. Oh. You still, regardless whether it's a thousand or fifteen thousand or twenty five thousand, up to forty five thousand, we are not required to go out and bid 
which delays the, the, the process of getting something done. But everything has to be board approved okay. by you. We are not bypassing you. That's not what I did. If I mislead you in that direction, I apologize. That's not no, what okay. I intended. Now, now that you're saying it, no, okay, now I understand. I'm sorry, I apologize for that. But you're not going out to bid with this resolution, correct? No, you're sir. Just go and do the work. No, no, this is just adopting this act. What happens after you adopt it, we, we submit a letter to the state controller uh, letting him know, or her, whoever it is, that uh, we are now subject to this act, and we change our board policy so that it reflects the language of the policy that matches the language of the act. Does that make sense? I'll make a motion to No, it makes sense. I'm sorry. Second. Yes. Second. second. So motion Thank by myself, second by Castillo. All in favor? Oh, no, that's a resolution, Mr. Aye. Romero. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Calderon. Aye. Calderon Jr. Aye. Aye. Castillo, myself, yes. <laughs> M. We're coming to early closed session. It's uh, 8.35 p.m. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.